When I was younger, I used to love going to the beach. I could explore undiscovered rock pools and paddle in waves that seemed absolutely ginormous at the time. But my most favorite thing to do was to take a pebble or a shell and draw in the sand. And I could draw for hours loads of different pictures on this blank canvas. And every night, when the tide would come back in, it would wash my pictures away, leaving a black, blank canvas for the next day. But something I never remember back then, when I was this small, is plastic on our beaches. And I want you to think right now, when you were smaller, can you remember plastic being on your beaches? Fast forward 20 years, and now sadly, this is a reality for all of us. Our oceans are sick, and they're filling with plastic. And they're crying out for help by coughing and spitting this plastic back out at us. This picture is taken from a beach that's near me in Cornwall, to Gantle Bay. And it's absolutely gorgeous, and the sunsets are stunning. But when you look down at the ground, at the sand, you see this carpet of plastic. And the scariest thing for me is that this has happened in my lifetime. When I was drawing in the sand as a small girl, I don't remember this plastic. But now, 20 years later, here it is on our beaches. And I'm sure it's the same for a lot of you. But when did I first start thinking about plastic in our oceans? Well, I was actually six years old and in primary school. And I went to a really small primary school in the countryside and it only had 60 students there. And one day we decided to host the charity balloon release, where the winner of the balloon that went the furthest would get a prize. So each balloon had information on it on how to return it back to us, and we asked anyone who found it to state where they had got it from. I remember standing in the playground with my balloon, my big red balloon, and holding it up to the sky and hearing the countdown. Three, two, one, go. And we watched our balloons float off into the distance. Two weeks later, I was very excited because I was going to hear the results of the balloon release. Who had won? Had my balloon won the race? I sat next to my mum in the local village hall, and we heard the results. Out of 60 balloons, one for each student in the school, five got returned. And one of the balloons made its way to France. It got returned by a French farmer. I remember thinking, sat there next to my mum, what happened to the other 55 balloons? And if one made its way all the way to France, what was happening to the balloons that were falling into the ocean? Now, you could say that was the beginning of me becoming a plastic detective. I started by drawing my pictures in the sand on this blank sand canvas. And now I'm a detective looking at how plastic's getting into our oceans. But most importantly, how can we stop it? And I was able to do my dream PhD, which was looking at the sources of plastic going into our oceans. And when we think of the sources, we might think of litter dropped on beaches, or we might think of a net lost at sea from a fisherman. But I wanted to investigate the way that plastic was getting into our ocean that we wouldn't typically always consider, but plastic that we use in our everyday lives. So my first bit of research was looking at facial scrubs. And can you put your hands up if you've ever heard of microbeads and facial scrubs? OK, a large majority of you, perfect. Well, truth be told, hands in the air, I used to use one. Microbeads are tiny plastic particles that were put into facial scrubs to get the dead skin off our, our face, so our faces would be super smooth. But no one had done research before looking at how many tiny plastic particles could be in one facial scrub bottle. So that's exactly what I decided to do. And these are the results. So for each glass vial shows how much plastic was extracted from one bottle. So for some of them, you can see it's almost half. In one bottle, we found that there could be up to three million tiny plastic pieces. Three million. So in a squirt on your hand that you'd use to wash your face, there could be over 10,000. Can you imagine washing your face with over 10,000 plastic pieces? When I used to use these products, I never even considered there would be plastic in there. And if I did know that, I probably wouldn't put two and two together that they could be guessing into our oceans. We wash our faces, these go down the drain, through the sewage treatment works, potentially, and into our oceans. But why was this research really exciting? 
Well, it showed people like you and me that we have a choice and a voice in what we're doing. People st started to not buy these products and look for natural alternatives instead that would contain sugar or salt. Then industry started to listen because it was becoming really unpopular to sell these items. And then the icing on the cake was that our research influenced government decisions to ban microbeads in the UK. I went back two years later and I tested the same facial scrubs that I tested and all of them had removed microbeads from their bottles. A massive high five moment in my research group. <laughs> Thank you. So what was next was the plastic detective, and it involved watching our clothes. Because most of the clothes that we buy are made out of plastic. And I want you to look down at the clothes that you're wearing right now, because you're wearing plastic. Most of the clothes that you're wearing are plastic. And to prove a point, my dress is made out of plastic. And this can be polyester acrylic or polyester cotton blend, so even a natural synthetic blend. And when we're washing our clothes in the washing machine, and they're swishing and swirling around, tiny plastic fibres can come off our clothes and, like the microbeads, potentially go down the drain, through the sewage treatment works and into our ocean. I wanted to do research looking at how many fibres are coming off our different clothes. This was my partner in crime for about a year, and we kind of have a love-hate relationship, because I spent next to 200 hours next to this machine washing clothes again and again and collecting the fluff. But the results were very interesting and it was worth it. So for a typical wash in the UK, which is about six kilograms, if I was to wash a load of acrylic clothing, up to 700,000 fibres could come off per clothes wash. Now imagine how many times you wash your clothes every week, a month, a year, then multiply that for a street, a town, a city, this is a huge proportion of plastic fibres potentially getting into our oceans and creating a big plastic soup. And how do you remove something that small? It's like trying to pick up a smarty with chopsticks. This created a lot of discussion for both microbeads and washing our clothes because it showed us that plastic is getting into our oceans in ways that we never typically thought of before. Who knew that plastic was coming off our clothes? Did you even consider that there could be tiny plastic microbeads in our facial scrubs? But it showed us that we have a choice in what we're doing. For example, you could go to the shop, look at the facial scrubs, and you have two options, one that contains plastic and one that doesn't, and probably about the same price. By you choosing the facial scrub that doesn't contain plastic, you're stopping three million tiny plastic pieces getting into our ocean. Talk about being an ocean hero in that moment. So every action that you do, think ocean. And I'm really excited to start my testing next week on my new inventions and my new research, which is with Sky Ocean Rescue and National Geographic, which is looking at different inventions that have been designed to capture fibres in the washing cycle, so we can try and stop them getting into our oceans. And rather than one washing machine, I now have four washing machines, and I've created this washing machine lab. Talk about things you never thought you were going to do in your career. So watch this space, because this could be the future of washing our clothes. Plastic pollution in the ocean can seem really daunting, and it can seem like the weight is on our shoulders. But I want you to think of it like a giant jigsaw puzzle. And the solution is by filling in all of the pieces. Well, you are all one of those pieces. You just need to figure out where you fit into that jigsaw puzzle. And when you're thinking, how the hell am I going to try and make a difference in this? I want you to think of a mosquito. And this mosquito has been built by my friend and artist, Rob Arnold, out of beach litter. You can see that the legs are made out of cotton bud sticks. There's a bottle making the body and also an inhaler for the tail. And it has a very important message. If you think you're too small to make a difference, try, try sleeping with a mosquito. And I want you guys to be that mosquito. Thank you. Thank you.